remote jobs i keep getting a lot of questions on instagram about how to get a remote job in tech if it's possible for a fresher to get a remote job and where to find a remote job i have personally worked remotely with two companies technically three but the third one was forced to become remote because of covid so in this video i'm going to share my experience on how i got each one of these because the experience with all of them have been a little bit different but i hope my journey helps you out and answer some of the questions that you have yourself so let's begin right before covid started i had actually joined a winter internship at hacker rank and that was an in-office internship and then in march the lockdown happened i continued working remotely as an intern there and after i graduated i luckily got a placement offer from hacker rank. so i decided to join hacker rank full time and since there was no option of going to the office i continued working remotely there the reason why i am sharing this is because this became a valuable experience for me because when you go and apply for remote jobs usually the companies look for engineers who already have some sort of remote experience in the past. So my first job at HackRank became a proof of my ability to work remotely. During that time was the rise of remote work and culture. A lot of companies were going completely remote. A lot of global companies were coming up with remote work culture. So I realized that this was something I see myself doing in a longer term. I knew that once the lockdown was over, the office was going to open and I was supposed to go back to office. So I started looking for remote jobs online. At this point, I only had about an year of experience. Even today, if you go and search for remote jobs in tech, you'll observe that most of these openings are for people with at least two to three years of experience. So even though I was applying for new positions every single day, it was still very hard for me to find one. Some of the platforms that I used was mainly LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is one of the biggest platforms out there. You can easily search for remote jobs by adding the remote filter in the job search option. Apart from LinkedIn, another website that I used was WellFound. Previously, it was known as AngelList. WellFound is mainly a job board for startups. Throughout my job search, I actually came across multiple of these job boards. Turing, TopDal, Honeypot, Gun, Remote Jobs, and many, many more. I have actually compiled down a list of all of these job boards into a blog post and I'll add a link to it in the description box below. Here are some of the biggest struggles that I faced when looking for my first remote job. So the first one is definitely location and time zone. If you're targeting company in Europe or US or Canada, then they'll most probably want you to be in the same time zone as them or at least have like three to four hours of time zone overlap. So the better option for me at that point was to look for jobs in Europe because Europe and India have at least three to four hours of overlap. Now again, I like the experience on paper and most of the openings that I came across were for mid or senior level engineers. I spent a lot of time applying for these jobs every single day and not hearing back from them, but I kept going because most of the times it's just a game of number. And one day, luckily, I came across a job posting that seemed like the perfect fit for me at that point. So technically, I did have some remote experience working full time as a software engineer at HackNet. Prior to working at HackRank also, I had actually participated in some open source programs back in my university days and done a couple of internships remotely. So I felt that all of that experience combined could be advantageous for me. At the same time, I also got a referral from a university friend of mine at a US-based startup. So I'm going to talk about the interview experience with both of them. So I didn't have any DSA or whiteboarding around in any of these companies. The interviews were actually very closely related to what I was going to do at the actual job itself. In the last round, I had a chat with one of the co-founders. It was a very casual chat about how they operate at the company, what sort of team building activities they do. And I asked a couple of questions about the team itself, if they were planning to scale the team further, what kind of people I was going to work with, what kind of work I was going to do. About the other company, as far as I can remember, I had about two rounds. The first round was me walking through my projects, my open source contributions, while screen sharing my GitHub profile. And the second round was again a culture fit round. So I ended up receiving offers from both of these companies. 
So now I'm going to share some of the tips and learnings throughout my journey. The first one is obviously if you are a fresher, it's going to be more difficult than someone who already has experience in the field. But it doesn't mean that it's not possible because I've seen a few people join globally remote companies right after they've graduated. So when it comes to experience, obviously full-time experience as a software engineer is the most valuable thing to have. But there are other ways to have experience that may not involve working as a full-time employee so even in university you could do things like hackathon you could contribute to open source you can do remote internships or you can do some sort of freelance work another way to gain experience while still being in university is you trying to build your own startup or you trying to build your own products from scratch even though you did not end up building like a unicorn it still is a very valuable learning experience because you built a product from scratch you most probably learned a lot about sales talking to customers and more another very important skill that uh, most of these remote companies out there are looking out for is communication. Communication becomes extremely important in a remote setting because you are not in person in a team and it's important for you to be able to communicate efficiently and to be able to communicate well with people from different parts of the world. Remote companies are looking for engineers that can fit in well together with their already existing team. So the moment that you start interviewing, you're also being judged on your communication. Another important skill to have to be able to thrive in a remote setting or even an in-office job is, is this concept of being managers of one. So I learned about this term uh, while reading the book Rework. So what managers of one essentially means is that you're someone who is able to manage yourself. So it means that you don't require someone to tell you what to work on, when to work on it, to micromanage you, to see if you're working on things or not, to continuously ask you for updates. You are someone who is a self-starter, who takes responsibility and is able to communicate effectively with the rest of the team. Remote work requires discipline and self-motivation because you're not going to an office, you're probably not going to meet your teammates for months on end. So you should be able to self-motivate yourself to work and remain focused. And lastly, one more thing that I want to add is if you're someone who's looking for remote jobs, then apart from directly applying to job openings on these job boards, what you can do is reach out to founders or recruiters directly on LinkedIn with a brief message about why you're reaching out to them. And another platform that can be extremely helpful for you is Twitter. So a lot of people post about new openings in their companies on Twitter. The friend who actually ended up referring me to my last company actually found their job on Twitter by responding to a tweet made by one of the founders. And to be able to get referrals, you need to have a strong network. So to be able to create a strong network like that is again contribute to open source be active on twitter and and be part of different communities maybe attend different tech talks or conferences and meet new people there hopefully you learned something new and my experience helped you out in some way if you have any questions you can let me know in the comment section below i'll see you in the next video